Great, let's go ahead and get started. So welcome to the next uh, Network Service Mesh meeting. So as a reminder, please add yourself to the attendees list if you have not done so already. And let's get started with some agenda bashing. Is there anything that anyone would like to talk about that is not on the agenda list? The um, the meeting notes have been posted onto the uh, onto the chat room, so uh, you can review the agenda there as well. Shall we go ahead and get going? Ooh, I was talking and <laughs> yeah, I was halfway through the, through the events. <laughs> cool, okay, let me get started again. So first, uh, um, make sure you add yourself to the agenda. Make sure that you, are there any topics that anyone wants to talk about before we, uh, before we kick off? Okay. I assume Do they have to be NSM related? They uh, feel free to propose. <laughs> we have not had a non NSM related uh, proposal yet. So we have so we have three recurring network service mesh talks. We have this one at eight AM, the NSM document call at eight AM Wednesday. We have the use case talks, which are on Mondays at 8 a.m. and on Tuesday, on the second, fourth, and fifth Mondays. And we also participate in the CNCF Telecom user group, Birds of a Feather, which occurs every first and third Monday at 8 a.m. On Thursday, May 23rd, we will be giving a intro deep dive uh, at, at the Telecom user group and cloud native network functions test bed as well. We have KubeCon coming up in May 21st through 23rd, and this will be held at Barcelona. Please book your hotels if you haven't done so already. We have an intro and a deep dive maintainer track that you can attend. And we should be offering a demo at the Elephant booth uh, I believe in conjunction with the ODL stuff. We have uh, two co-located events at KubeCon EU. We have the FIDO Mini Summit, which occurs over, which is going to occur on Monday, May 20th in Barcelona, and the Cloud Native Network Service Day. We have talks in both. If you have any booth talks or demos or anything like that to add at KubeCon, uh, pl please speak up. And or push a PR to the site. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> We also have KubeCon China coming up where we, uh, Nikolai and I have a talk scheduled for doing an introduction talk. Uh, this talk is particularly interesting because it will be, it will also be translated live into, uh, into Chinese. So uh, bring, bring all of your native Chinese uh, friends who are in, in China. And also I believe this will be the very first talk about NSM to be held live in Asia. Yes, that is true. Very exciting. We have ONS. Oh, that is on June 25th through 26th. We have ONS Europe coming up. The call for paper is currently open and closes on June 16th, the middle of next month. That occurs in Antwerp. So if you're interested in talking, feel free to uh, submit a, a paper there. Uh, in November, we have two events, the MEF 2019 and KubeCon. The call for paper for KubeCon um, is now open as of yesterday. So it is open till July 12th. So we, we, have, some, uh, we have some more writing to do. And um, any events that you have with an NSM presence, please open a pull request to our site and we will add you onto it. And do we have Lucina here to talk about the uh, social media community? Good morning, yes. Yeah, you have the floor. Thank you. Since last Tuesday, we have gained 15 more followers. We have followed 182 oh. more accounts and, I, and we posted six original tweets and retweeted a few number unknown <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much lucina this is going so well under your, your your care much appreciated thank you and you're welcome yes and the um the site also reminds me that uh, we have to start adding the frequently asked questions to the site so I will make sure to get started on that. Uh, actually, Brent was going to start a Google Doc track, but um, I don't. I haven't seen one passed around unless I missed it. So I'll I'll open one up and uh, email it to the group. We so we also have now a uh, a set of uh, release notes. These are not the finalized versions. So if you open up the release notes document, you'll see this is the initial proposed version of what I'm thinking of uh, having this release. So it mimics the uh, Kubernetes release notes, which I think are, are very well done. Uh, the main departure is that in the what's new, because this is the very first release, <laughs> I, I would thought, well, I'll pop this. I'll post all the pull the uh, all the pull requests line by line, and I realize there's 800 of them. And so, um, as much as I would love to to do that, I decided to write a higher level overview as to what we've uh, what we've built. There may be things missing in this, so if you feel there is a major component that is missing in the reference architecture or or otherwise, uh, please. Please comment on it. Please, uh, please suggest it. So, a couple of things that we need to work out as well is for downloads. I've added a couple things that we could talk about for the downloads. So, uh, Helm, Docker images, uh, links to the source code, preferably signed. Um, are this, so are there any recommendations or anything like that that uh, that people would like to see that I missed? One thing I think we probably need to think about, and we may not need to have to dive in deeply here, is now we're dumping a bunch of CI images, including various latest things, into the network service mesh Docker repo. Um, we may want to separate a CI repo from the release repo. For some reason, I thought we had already done that. But uh, no, I, I agree with you. I, I, keep, I, it, keep it clean. I may be misinformed as to the current state of the system, but because that way, you know, 
we, we, we don't have people mistakenly grabbing latest and getting whatever it is that we have on master just now. Yeah, I definitely agree. My, um, my one preference on that is that we, uh, we actually make three accounts. Okay. And the reason for that is one of them is our standard test. One of them is our, uh, one of them is our fully released version. The third one, is so that we can we can test a uh, test a release. Uh, that way, we're not publishing directly to the to the main repo. Bit of a staging repo. Exactly. Uh, or or the other alternative. But basically, I want the CI to to publish to to some staging repo anywhere. And it could either be a the, the repo with the same name in a different uh, in a different location. So we're not publishing to Docker Hub, or it's on Docker Hub and it's. Uh, and it's under a different uh, namespace. So one or the other, but I think that's a fantastic idea. Cool, got it. Um, yeah, and then that's part of, part, that's part of uh, automating everything. We, we wanna make sure these things are, like even our release process is uh, tested as much as we can. Yep. Um, right, and uh, some of the definitions that I took on here, uh, I, uh, I stole from Jeffrey in the in the glossary, so you should uh, recognize some of the some of the literature there. Um, we it may make sense to rewrite it a little bit to uh, make it a little bit more simple, like on the network service mesh re registry, like people will not know what a vim is. Um, uh, or we make or we use it as an opportunity to introduce them to the glossary. You you have to have led a, a thoroughly blessed life to not know what a vim is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we can always throw it like the e dot g you know OpenStack VMware type things in there too. Just give like examples. It's like Kleenex, right? Like it's actually tissue paper, but everybody just knows the brand Kleenex, and the two are synonymous. Or like a skill saw actually being a circular saw. Yeah, no, I mean that, that that's part of what my joke about them was is that, that generally speaking, the the, the actual People use are so like Kleenex that they don't call them BIMs. You only call them BIMs if you're in some weird space where you're trying to make many of them work in the same way. Right. But I mean, to Frederick's point, like I think a lot of us assume that people would know what a VIM is, but if you're just a pure developer who's coming from like the public cloud space, you're probably like, what is this acronym and why is it here? And uh, you might be offended if you are an uh, Emacs person, so. <laughs> so and uh one last uh, thing about it as well is i'm also sticking even though it's uh, not part of the main release itself i'm also putting the fact that it's cncf membership and uh then uh, the new logo is being added in here as well so uh once that logo comes up we're going to we're going to inject it in and uh we get to go uh, one thing I'm going to need help with is under the known issues, if there are any major bugs that we have not resolved that uh, we want to call out, uh, we have to make sure that we populate those with uh, not just a list, but the actual uh, issues that, uh, that track those, uh, those problems. Um, and then moving forward, we'll call out, uh, like Kubernetes, we'll actually call out major uh, major pull requests and uh, inspects that uh, that uh, have changed network service mesh in an interesting way moving forward. Uh, and I'll also need some help with uh, correlating the get, getting started as to uh, what do we want to show off and um, and making sure that that's all tested for the for the main release itself. So basically, we go to the documents, make sure that everything uh, that everything that we want to showcase in the documents works as intended in Linkum. And so that's pretty much uh, it. If, um, the, let me know if you have any suggestions. Uh, on, like if there's anything that I should add that's missing or anything that you find that would be useful. Cool. No, I think this is good. Um, the node issues is going to be fun because I know we're, we're currently rapidly pulling bugs out of the system and squashing them. So, <clears throat> so far, we're, we're doing a really good job of making sure that, that the, the known issues are fixed. Yeah, and I and I put in uh, very clearly this is an alpha release, and so uh, that should be code for use this in production. I mean, don't use this in production. 
depending on your uh, your level of risk. Um, cool. So back to the main agenda. So I saw Alex is on the um, um, Alex is on the agenda. So or she's in the room. So you have four. Hi. Yes. Um, so I think most of you saw the newest logos that I posted yesterday. Um, I'm. I got some feedback already, so it seems like there's one specific. You want to share, Alex? Sorry? You want to share? Oh, yes. Okay, definitely. I'll share my screen right now. Hold on one second. Uh, let me know if you can't see. Looks great. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is the newest board. Um, it seemed that most of the feedback I've gotten so far is for this one right here on the right, the uh, three down on the right, the orange and yellow one. Yep. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, do we, we're, we're, we're coming up to the point where I think we need to probably make a decision um, so that we could potentially get stickers and things printed. Um, how do folks feel about possibly taking a decision today? I'm okay. We have 25 people on the call. It seems like a quorum to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let, let, let's offer a little bit of space for folks to express their opinions here. I know we've had some people express opinions on the thread um, and I know like from those opinions as Alex pointed out there's a lot of support for R3C2 which is the orange and yellow one here. Um, do folks have other opinions? Please feel free to speak up if you do. We're, we would not have gotten anywhere nearly as good if we had actually not had diverging opinions. Speak up Jeffrey. <laughs> Use your words. Okay. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Hey, I'm super glad that we moved away from the goofy looking spider and the web nonsense and went with the matrix. Um, I actually sort of like the um, the third one down a little bit better or um, even the orange and red that's um, below that one. I kind of prefer the transition a little bit more as opposed to the darker outer matrix with the um, lighter inner matrix, but that's just me. I, I can handle the one that's just off the screen now on the right hand side, but um, I prefer the um, light to dark transition personally. Um, and I definitely like the reoriented um, hepticon that is now got the flat side down. Um, it's not too, too overly Kubernetes, but it still kind of gives a nod to the CNCF that adopted us. So that's my thoughts. Cool. Yeah, I think one of the other things I noted that, that I noted that made me super happy is I, I, I'm very sensitive to color palettes because I make, as you know, a couple of slides here and there. Um, and so you want a good color palette to work with. And, and I was super happy that um, R3C2, the orange and yellow one, um, that if you invert the colors on that, just mechanically invert them, you get something that is a really lovely blue on black um, that also works. And I, I dropped that out to the thread as well. Yeah. As long as I can peel the spider off my laptop, I'm happy. <laughs> no, no, hate on Ariadne. I mean, she's a good spider. She's just not a logo. <laughs> <laughs> she looks very much like an ant with two extra legs. <laughs> a happy ant. Um, so do we want to go ahead and go with um, R3C2? And my, my guess is, Alex, you probably don't, you know, since you're producing these sort of in mass, you may want to go and clean a few things up and you know, yeah. so certainly feel free to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And did we have any strong opinions about fonts? As no. I think 
What is R three C two? Is this the? It's the orange yeah. and yellow one right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. cleaner the font, the better. Just because people are going to shrink and expand and you know blow these up without changing pixel ratios and stuff. So, like the one that comes with the one that you're leading towards, Ed. Um, the solid color with no transition and just very nice block lettering, I think, is a plus because regardless of how you manipulate it, it's probably still going to be readable. Okay. Um, what is so? What is that font, by the way, Alex? I, I didn't. I, I, I listed unidentified font one and unidentified font because <laughs> I didn't. Know um, yes, one. that one is uh, Lato, L-A-T-O. Um, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not Helvetica for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was hoping we'd pick Comic Sans, but uh, yeah, that that, that 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 can always be a fun font to work with. So I, I, <laughs> I think most of the two fonts you have here are the the the, the Lato, which is the one with that's there on the the R three C two, the orange and yellow logo with the heptagon, and then I think the other one in the logo sure. just above it is the Josephine Sands, which is a little yeah. more blockish. Um, do folks have any strong feelings between those two? I, I think we've had some strong feelings for Lotto, but I, I don't know if they were just because it's a cool font or in comparison. The one that's on the purple, brown, and green one on the left-hand side too, that's also very clean. But like, okay. if you go immediately to its right, like with the um, slightly canted E's and stuff like that, I just know because I'm not artistic and I've tried to church things up too much in the past that when you start expanding and shrinking things, they start to look super funky. So um, the thin letters in that, you know, purple, green, brown one or the ones, the lotto, um, it's just very crisp and clean. It doesn't have a lot of pixelation at the edges of the curved letters. I think that'll hold up well. Sounds good. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, I tend to agree. So what, what is that font on the purple and brown one that, that was commented as being so clean? That one's um, Nunito, it's called, N-U-N-I-T-O. Um, so there's, yeah, there's only three fonts I included, that one and then Lado and then the um, Josephine Sands, because those were the ones that were called out, I guess, in the feedback, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, that, that, that's a good choice. Do, do folks have any, I, I think, to my eye, the, the, the Josephine Sands, you're probably right, Jeffrey. Um, so between the, the, the slightly heavier lotto and the slightly lighter, um, what was it again? Nunito. Nunito. <laughs> yeah. Strong feelings between those two? Yeah, the good news is we have a side-by-side -side there with the orange and yellow and the... the, the I don't really find any big difference, but probably okay. there is. Yeah, maybe I the kinda, S is slightly different. I kind of like the lighter uh, Nunito, personally. Same. It, it's just, it's not as bold. There's more separation between the lines. So like I said, when you start to shrink it down really small, you'll probably still be able to read it. The pixels won't bleed into each other as bad. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think we've got we, we we've got a font selection. We have a color and form selection, and then Alex, I, I I leave it to your able hands to you know do the various and sundry professional machinations that <laughs> we don't understand, but, but but we will notice the difference in terms of it's sort of like um, I once had someone explain to me that a really good suit unless you're a professional of the art, you will know that it's a really good suit, but you won't be able to explain why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah good, as someone huh? who's completely artistically challenged, I appreciate everything you've done for us. Oh, oh yeah. no, it's been great. Thanks for, you guys have been great with all the feedback and it's been very good. Um, I will, uh, so now I guess for stickers, you're, is there any specific file types you need? Obviously, SVG and AI probably, but otherwise, that's probably all, right? SVG and AI would be great. Okay. Um, you can always, we can always dump SVG to other formats. Um, I, we, we can then see what it takes to find out about getting stickers. I, I will go and poke the service desk about that and see what that process looks like. Sounds um, great. So 
Um, we're going with the orange one um, with that different font than the other font. And then, um, okay, yeah, so great. So I'll just revise that and then create the, the right files and send that to you, Ed, by the end of today or tomorrow morning. Does that work? That's, that works perfectly. And then we actually already have a place that we've been dumping these logo files up and drive. And I'll drop them there for all to see. And I know that CNCF also has a standard place for logos, um, which is unbelievably helpful. Um, and we can get it up there as well. Sounds perfect. OK, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Much appreciated. Okay. Bye. Cool. And now back to the release. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I think uh, Nikolai was next based upon my my remembrance of the uh, meeting notes. Yep. Let me see if I find my Safari. Can I share? I, I'm seeing a share. Do we want you to share? Yep. Awesome. Hey. So I was browsing here. So um, the story is like that. So first of all, we are like a lot behind our schedule in the release. Uh, there has been some talk uh, in the Slack channel about how we want to approach this. And uh, Fred, your uh, effort to start uh, putting this together is, uh, is very helpful. So thanks, thanks for that. Uh, unfortunately, with our vacations that were in the last uh, 10 days, we're not really getting where we want it to be. Uh, so this is the board. Mm, we still have a lot of things on, on it. So I guess that probably the question that we should answer today is, do we still want to try keep our plans for having a release at KubeCon, or we should just postpone and try to figure out a proper way to do the release, even calling it alpha, but still having something that that we feel like we want to show to the public. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would particularly like to hear from all the various folks in the community who are in the trenches finding and fixing all these bugs. I think there may be more stuff in the backlog. We, we may need to, to arrange to go groom this board somewhat, because I think there may be some things in the backlog that are in progress or done, because I don't think we've necessarily been grooming the board. But we've been doing a super good job of, of shaking bugs out of the system and fixing mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. but I'd love to hear from some of the guys who are in the trenches. I know you are, but from some of the other folks and see what they think is uh, possible. OK, uh, let me try. Uh, I think uh, to resolve possible all issues we have we at least need one more week. So probably we could uh, create a release branch uh, somewhere in the middle of the next week. Uh, so at least uh, we will be sure all demos is working with the release branch. And uh, potentially we will cherry pick any changes required. So it will be safer to do with master for any changes and this uh, release branch or alpha release branch will be used for demos or and for kubicon okay i like that so so essentially we we changed the plan to having a release branch for kubecon but uh, the purpose of this branch is to to have stable demos but not necessarily having all the CIs and all the release notes and uh, everything in the yeah. world that we would like to yeah. see. I mean, I, I, I think it's, its purpose is very much like what we normally do for Throttle, which is you have some, it's something that's stable um, and you, you, you may be still be adding tests to it. You may be still finding bugs and you may still be fixing bugs. But the point is, it's a place where you're only finding, you know, increasing testing, testing finding and fixing bugs uh, so that we have stable demos uh, and we're moving towards a release, but yeah, I think you know that that seems more realistic to me than trying to show something prematurely out the door. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And my, I would, I, I think as as much as it would be nice to be able to get the first one out at KubeCon, uh, it's more important that that initial release, even though we have the word alpha stuck on it and Andromeda is the first release. 
uh, I think it is very important that we that we hit the quality bar high enough that when we get people who, because people are going to be looking at this very critically and are going to want to see does this work or not, and they're going to get their first impression based upon that that cut, that branch. And so uh, I, I would rather I would rather delay it. And to be clear, I, this this isn't an implication on on anyone on the team or anything like that as well. I mean, you all have worked amazingly hard, and so you know, kudos to, to you all, you know, and this is, this is purely about, you know, what, what is the, what is the right thing to do for, for the project for, for, uh, in order to ensure that that first release is, uh, is going to win us people and not, uh, and not create, uh, not create skepticism in the community. So for example, our latest, uh, yeah, we, yet again something so yeah good um okay so uh from the things that i'm involved to uh involved in i can say that um because of somehow failing cis for various reasons i mean uh so we are pushing uh, forward the ipv6 verification we have found some um some problems around it, which uh, which are I believe are handled now. I mean, which are not really inside uh, inside NSM. Um, and uh, we also are having this thing with the Helm chart set. I saw your PR. I will have to check actually how these things blend together, but I guess that they will. Um, and um, yeah, I have some some tech depth here to to add. Um, <clears throat> I know that we have some troubles. Why NSMCI in AWS is here in this state? Should it be? Yeah, at the moment we have some issues with uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. AWS. I, I remember, yeah, yeah, we sent that uh, last time, sorry. Uh, where was this, okay. Um, so yeah, for Asia we know uh, something's going on here. Automated collection of VP post system data for crashes. Wow, but that already done a long ago. <laughs> should be yeah, that's like uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, good. And here in our to do, well, unfortunately, still a long list. I don't know if there's something that we no, it's we, worth we, mentioning, but we can, yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, Ed, uh, even before you say, it. we need to go here uh, and maybe uh, they label some, some things here. Yeah, and so the, the, the question becomes, I mean, we've got about 20 minutes left in this meeting. Do we want to do some bug grooming here or, or do we want to do a, a sort of a bug grooming uh, meeting leading up to the release where we can get folks together and say, look, um, and or one thing we could do is sort of pre-groom, um, you know, Andre and Nikolai and, and, you know, Frederick and myself could go through and take the ones that we know are in progress or done and try and shut them around to the right place. Um, does that, does that also make sense for folks? We could maybe just try pre-grooming because as much fun as you guys are, uh, meetings are hard, particularly given our global stre uh, stretch. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sounds good. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we can we can just uh, I mean uh, go through the issues and uh, everyone can put uh, notes uh, what uh, what they think that, that that needs to be done for that for that particular issue. Mm -hmm. If you have some some kind of opinion, then that could help. Like a distributed uh, asynchronous uh, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, let, let, let's let's start with the first pass of just trying to get the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. around to, um, to to try and and sort of sort things into uh, the right categories. I've been going through and trying to sweep things onto the board by going through the issues as they come up and marking them with labels and adding them to the project. <clears throat> but I, I, you know, I have not yet actually gone through and tried to sweep them to the right category. So I suspect that the, the backlog is probably much smaller than it seems to be, because I suspect a great many things have actually been done or are in progress. Um, 
and we just need to actually get them uh, swept to the right place and possibly closed and other things. Isn't that one already? I think that 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 this one is in progress, right? Okay, yeah, okay, uh, I agree. Let's do some pre grooming, uh, not, um, yeah, um, not, not schedule a meeting. Yeah. Um, and if we need to do a meeting, we can do it in Barcelona uh, because we'll be more or less in the same time zone. <laughs> Yeah. similar closer time zones so okay oh, yeah so let's, let's go ahead and let's try and, and go through mm -hmm. collectively and groom before uh next week's meeting and we'll see if that works um and and we'll sort of put the incentive in there that you know if grooming if grooming asynchronously works then we don't have to find a time a time for another meeting yeah uh okay with that i that we are more or less done with this. Any any other other thoughts here? Any comments, suggestions, complaints? Um, when do we want to when do we want to cut a release? Like, do we do we want to when do we want that? When do we want to cut a release zero one branch? Um, Is that gonna? We said yeah. next week. Yeah, I think we're I think we're trying to target next week. We can certainly assess that in this meeting and make the call. Um, it, you know, make the call to cut it if we we are where we expect to be next week. Does that sound about right to folks? Yeah, and and this question is is independent from the actual release itself. So I I want to make that that clear. So it's just a matter of like, is are we cutting a branch specifically for for KubeCon or are we cutting a branch that is going to turn into into the release? And so I want to get a differentiation on that. In my mind, it's the the letter. Like we're going to cut the release branch, but we're not going to tag the release for KubeCon specifically. We're going to focus on stabilizing the demos that they are reproducible and doing whatever we expect them to do for KubeCon. Okay. So in okay, in that scenario, okay, that makes sense. Is there anything else anyone wants to talk about on this specific uh, topic? Okay. Um, if, Prem, your name is still on for uh, for a meetup. Sure. Uh, do you want to talk about it or do you want to yeah. go? Okay, cool. So I have some good news. Uh, so in principle, I got uh, approval for uh, the meetup. Um, so Lumina has agreed to uh, probably take care of the space as well as a bit of sponsorship uh, for the uh, pizzas and uh, drinks. Um, so I'm still working on the budget. Um, so one other thing is uh, the plan is probably we can also expand it to uh, wherever Lumina offices are, which is essentially in India as well as in Australia. Um, so that's one other update. Um, well, do, we uh, have a, do we have a link to the meetup plan? Uh, so I'm still working on that. Oh, okay. so I'll probably should uh, publish it either today or tomorrow once we have. That's okay. It just sounded like you you, you were ready, and so you do yeah. take your time. Um, but we'd love to see what it is. Sure. Yep. Definitely. Um, so that's the update with respect to the meetup. So only thing is, uh, what we would need to do is we need to probably. I mean, once I have the plan, I'll probably also uh, see if we can create the meetup uh, group in meetup dot org and uh, add you uh, add bunch of us as the uh, local organizers and after that what you would need to do is we need to probably have to agree on the uh, frequency as well as the uh, list of speakers uh, we need to probably i mean this is very common we need to keep the pipeline uh, so that we people know what are the talks and they would probably plan accordingly yeah yeah, and um, something we should also think about is do we want to make it uh, specifically NSM or do we want to make it a little bit more generic and say maybe cloud native networking or, or something similar to that? Um, you know what? I had the same question. So it's good that you brought up Frederick. We can probably talk about it. We can probably hear from the community as well. On uh, Only thing is uh, uh, what, when we call it as cloud native networking, there are a lot of other uh, meetups that are around it. 
I, um, I, I would be a little bit reluctant to call it the cloud native networking meetup at this stage, just because mm -hmm. there are other things out there in the space. Right. Um, and I don't want to come across as sort of land grabby about mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that would be kind of my sense. I mean, we, we do want to mind our P's and Q. Okay. Yeah, and I think so. I'd actually yeah, also, that's... Prim, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, you, you first. Well, I was going to say, I, I would definitely, um, obviously, the Bay Area is a hot spot for these kind of things. So when you guys kind of navigate through some of those things, I'd like the lessons learned because it'd be nice to maybe get something like that started up here in Denver as well. Um, I'd kind of like to wait, though, and see kind of what works for you guys in the Bay Area and then try to replicate it here. Sure, definitely. Yep. I, I, could also, I could also definitely do something like that here in Austin. Um, but but it, I think it also is useful. In, in some sense, the Bay Area is sort of like the easiest target ever for meetups. <laughs> um, and once you guys have yeah. bugs out there, we can we can try in slightly more difficult targets. Yeah. That, that doesn't mean the work is any less hard, but it's it, it, but it certainly is uh, a launching pad. Um, in fact, um, I um, I was one of the main organizers behind uh, the largest, the, the world's largest Scala meetup back like in 2011, 2012. Uh, and it, it was a tremendous amount of work putting into it because we we would have people come in and say, oh yeah, we, we can we can hold 150 people. You walk into their office and it's a, it's a, it's a closet, maybe hold 25 or 30. Uh, and so in terms of like, there, like there's definitely a huge amount of work that go, that's, that's involved with that, but I think the the important the most important thing that we do is we try to keep the quality of the speakers high, and we maintain a uh, a very common cadence. Like we say, every second Tuesday of the of the month at six p.m. on the dot, no exceptions. There's a, there's a meetup, and we just drill it into people, and so people start to who who really care about it start to associate that as their NSM date night or however you want to set it up. And so they end up uh, marking those, uh, their calendars off in their mind, and don't accidentally schedule on top of it. And so, so I, but I, I think it, it, had I tried to do, to do this in even places like, like Denver or Houston or so on, I would not have had the same response. So, so I've, I've been looking into this for a while and Denver actually has a pretty thriving meetup space, but um, I'm kind of in this weird spot of do I take NSM to an existing meetup or, you know, I, I think the comments about like trying to stay cloud native networking will maybe be seen as trying to compete with other groups here in Denver. So my other alternative is to wait until, you know, maybe January of next year, kind of see how you guys fare after NSM has, you know, had another round through um, CNCF Barcelona and CNCF, um, you know, here in the North Americas again, and San Diego, and hopefully we have more exposure there. Because the other thing I don't want to do is, you know, set up a meetup that only two people come to. Yeah, that is very important. I agree. Yeah. Sure. I think that so I'm, I'm good trying idea. to navigate that. And and just so you know, the the first Docker meetup had around eight. I think around eight people show up, eight to ten people. So don't feel. Don't feel bad if it's uh, if it starts off small. Yeah, I mean, but I, I think you are correct. It's, it's also good to to start sort of circulating with other relevant meetups in the in the broader in the geography, because I know we we've got like a fairly large Kubernetes meetup here in Austin, and maybe I could try and get on that schedule as well. Yep, sounds good. So um, I'll probably create a document around it, and we can probably add our thoughts. Uh, I also have um, our. Uh, marketing person her name is stephanie she is helping out on this i can invite to one of the calls uh, and then probably ask her to give the update she's quite connected uh, she's to work for telecom council and she's uh, well known in the uh, marketing fraternity uh, we can leverage some of her uh, experience and then get it done yep cool yeah, yeah i think that's Just, also uh, a thought occurred on the uh, uh, so basically the theme of the meetup maybe uh, I know cloud native is highly contested, but perhaps you could consider edge networking. Um, at least I haven't seen a lot of meetups around uh, edge itself, especially edge networking. Something to think about. I think that that's an entirely can of worms that will open up a Pandora's box that you don't want to deal with for something as focused as an SM. 
I, I would say that Edge is probably more contested than cloud native, at least in the telco space for sure. Not, not, not to mention the metaphorical explosion we just experienced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, if it's not if it's not cloud native networking, I, I'd rather fall back to to being very strict on network service mesh. I, I personally would not feel very comfortable with uh, with pigeonholing us into uh, into any other bucket at this point. I think maybe like just narrowing it down from cloud native networking to like maybe just like CNFs or something with NSM. Just talking about service meshes and the. Um, the networking appliances that you would want to potentially plumb or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, which is network service mesh. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, obviously, I'm biased and I'm trying to be sneaky about this, but um, but you know, like I think CNFs is something that's focused enough, but has a lot of people's imaginations captured, and then having that partnered with something like NSM to say, like, you know, this could actually be a reality, and here's a way to do it. Um, maybe be a way to get enough people interested, but also have it focused enough to um, not just have something that's, you know, a bunch of random people showing up and arguing what the edge looks like. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and that one other, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And one other thing is also uh, uh, what I foresee is uh, NSM is going to be the pivotal point and then I see a lot of uh, things around it, right? From the relevance perspective. Uh, even though we started as network service mesh, probably you can bring in NY more from the relevance of networking, uh, all other similar modules so that we create or grow the ecosystem uh, based on NSM. Yeah, and the, and the way that you do that is you, uh, you have, instead of having guest speakers, uh, you have guest topics. Mm -hmm. So things that have relevance to the space, even though they're not exactly that, that, that right. thing. Yeah, and uh, I like guest topics. <laughs> Yeah, and one other thing is uh, I used to do a lot of unconferencing around uh, uh, cloud. Uh, we used to have what you call as a cloud camp. Uh, so even unconferencing helps you to bring up uh, uh, or make audience more engaged. Yeah, there are, there are a couple of ways uh, we can engage the audience and gain interest. Yeah. I also think partnering when you talk about guest topics with like the Envoy community, the Istio community, the Linkerd community to um, A, show them that we're not trying to like, you know, put our hands in their Kool-Aid and also how things can be potentially complimentary um, would be beneficial too. Cause I still always get the, um, well, why are you working on this, Jeff? Why don't you just use Istio? <laughs> like common at least once a week. No, no, I, I, I get that too. And, and, and I, I usually find the easiest thing to do is to ask them exactly how, you know, how, how they expect putting Ethernet frames and HTTP headers to go for them. <laughs> sure, but I, I yes, and I have similar conversations. Um, it, but like I said, if we show how like things are complementary, and just once again, now that we're in the CNCF, like becoming as um, you know, collaborative as possible will only help us. Yeah, um, a second thing we can do as well is uh, at least here in, in the Bay Area. Uh, some of the meetups are amenable to partnering with other groups. So there, there may be a cloud uh, native computing group out there that uh, may want to on occasions co-host something. Um, and we can do like a joint, uh, a joint thing. So, and, and that'll, that'll help pick up our uh, visibility in those communities as well. Yep. Agree. So the way to work out which ones those are is to look at which ones have done that in the past with other groups. Um, and there's a few of them out there. And uh, basically, we want, we have to find one that's large enough that uh, that they don't feel threatened with uh, with a group who and, and, and basically say, are, are we building our competition? And I think we're we're segmented enough that we shouldn't run into that problem too much, but it still may be an issue with a couple groups. So we do need to be sensitive. I'll probably create the mind map and then we can probably add what is the, how does the ecosystem look like? We have five more minutes and I think Nikolai still added an item to the agenda. Yeah, it's just, I mean, we don't have the time to go into the details here, but I think that we can at least open, as someone mentioned a couple of minutes before, the can of worms here. But um, 
Um, what I see is that uh, we have this nice use cases call where a lot of things are discussed. Uh, and then we have the CNF testbed, which we haven't even touched from what I know, uh, from NSM point of view. Uh, and then we have our demos and our CI. And I kind of see all these things going, okay, not going, but kind of approaching um, different problems, which require attention. I mean, um, you, I mean, we spend a lot of time talking about these things, planning, uh, but then we somehow fail to 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 put the the, the attention into, I don't know. Uh, implementing at least some of the ideas, or at least start implementing or having some some basic, I don't know, code going in that direction. I mean, I understand, I mean, this is the state of the project. I'm not saying that we should change something tomorrow or whatever, but uh, maybe at some point we'll have to figure out how we want to approach all this because there are essentially different directions. So the demos that we have today are very basic. They're demonstrating essentially the SARA type of use cases. Our CI goes into a lot of other details. It also has the same. Yeah, so I mean, one of the things we may want to do is everything comes down to sort of accessibility of doing the work. I think we have a strong mm -hmm. amount of folks on doing things. And so you know, effectively, you know, if we have people who are interested in say, doing a use case or putting together a new demo or for example, the CNF testbed stuff. Um, if some of us would be willing to stand up and sort of mentor them through the process, um, I think that that would probably make it much less daunting if people wanted to, to pick up doing some of those things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is that we should uh, focus at some point, put some efforts into enabling other people joining in, in these directions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, exactly. Mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> because we're, we're, we're running into a problem where we've got all kinds of good stuff going on and the community is growing and there are all these other interesting things, but everyone is currently busy working on some other interesting thing. Mm -hmm. and, and my experience with mentoring people is that it, it's incredibly um, low cost because what ends up usually happening is someone will go and grab a problem and they need a little guidance on how to get started. So you hum a few bars and they go off and they do the thing and then they get stuck someplace. And so they come back and they say, hey, I'm stuck here. Uh, and usually the place they're stuck is really easy for you to get them unstuck. Um, and so you, you save them a week of bumping around in the, in the dark by sort of saying, oh, oh, go try that. And they, you know, you do a couple rounds of that and in half a day they're moving forward again. Um, and, and so that ends up being sort of a really good way to help people get moving. Um, okay, I think that this kind of partially answers the issue that I, I'm trying to bring up. That other part of the issue is that we are focusing on okay, issue. It's not really an issue. It's just I guess that's something that that we are going to face at some point, more or less. I mean, um, <clears throat> um, uh, NSM is quite basic as a te 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 technology. I mean, in terms of um, um, founding, like it's, 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 it should be part of the foundation of the cloud, of the next generation cloud, if you want to call it like this. But then you can build a lot of things on top of that, right? And uh, what we are building today is very, very, very simple and basic, which is okay, right? I mean, that's, that's what we do. Now, the thing is how we want to move further. I mean, do, you, do, do, do we want to start putting some effort into the, you know, whatever is discussed in the use cases, like, you know, telco type of things, how we want to tackle the problems, if you want, with the, um, with the public clouds, right? I mean, because today we are growing as an overlay, how we are going to, to um, integrate. Okay, so for the CNF test bet, I guess that we have good, good enough c connections in there, and so it's more or less under, understood what we what we need to do and what we want to my, do there. My, my impression is that, that Taylor and the rest of from the CNF test bed team have just been sort of saying, they're very politely saying, okay, whatever you're ready. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a fair characterization, guys? <laughs> so there's a comment in the chat that says yes. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 
but okay, uh, I guess that that I mean we are kind of uh, on top of the hour, so maybe maybe we should just uh, I don't know continue this discussion if we find that this is useful uh, next time. But I think that there are some things that we can try to figure out along those lines, or maybe not. Um, so uh, just a closing parting thought. I think Nikolai brings up a good point. We perhaps need to sort of. Uh, uh, bring these into consideration and putting together a roadmap, right? So sort of roadmap and priorities from a community perspective. So these are all the activities. How do we manage it? At least some thought process, structured thought process around it. Hmm, that, that can be super helpful. Just my two cents. That's all. No, that, that, that can be super helpful. And it's, it's one of these things where you know, people will sometimes talk about there being no product management involved in open source. And that's not strictly true. It just looks way different. Than, than it looks in the commercial product, right? Because in the commercial product, you know, basically you say, okay, well, we have these five things that we care about. And if we cut these two, we can pour resources into those three. Open source mm -hmm. doesn't work all like that, right? Um, it, it's sort of a broader and inclusive thing. But at the same time, if you can sort of say, okay, here's the bogey list of things that people feel are important. Um, and so then it gives a sort of a, a thing that people can turn to for stuff they could work on if it interests them. Interest them. Um, and, and that can be very productive. No. Exactly. So maybe perhaps we could uh, sort of maybe kick this off at the use case call, like basically uh, start putting together, I mean, even the last use case call, we're trying to get into the details on specifics and breaking down further, right, the use cases. And then, um, of course, everything is interesting, but from execution standpoint, where is the most community interest? Likewise, we could factor yep. these in and then sort of, you know, uh, well, put some thoughts around it together, right? If you're figuring out what if any gaps are there. Like, I know, for example, I'm sorry, Daniel, I'm going to throw you under the bus, that Daniel basically wants us to have SRV6 support yesterday for many of his use cases. Um, and so that would currently be a gap. Now, it's a gap we plan for the architect. So as soon as somebody picks up a shovel to go do the SRV6 support, it should be fairly easy. Um, but I suspect that for many of the cases, there'll be sort of a set of, oh, we're going to need this. And then we have it on our roadmap, but maybe we want to accelerate it. Okay, let's continue this uh, next time. I think that it needs a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll go and close it up then. Um, so. Thank you, everyone, for attending this week's Network Service Mesh meeting. We will have our next meeting again at the same time next week. Uh, you all have a really great day. Take care. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, bye.